bigotry, the pain, the barrier keeping black players out of the major leagues was now forever broken. And the legend of Jackie Robinson was born. I mean, nobody in baseball will ever wear number 42 again because of that man and that moment. But I bet you already knew that story. Maybe you've seen the movies, read the books. So let me tell you a different story, one that's been overshadowed for far too long. Just imagine you're invisible. No one hears you. No one sees you, so no one remembers you. You're the best at what you do, but you don't get an audience, and nobody's giving you a stage. Think about how utterly helpless that would make you feel. That's what it was like for countless black athletes whose names we'll never know. So what was the NFL's Jackie Robinson moment? How do we get to today, the Super Bowl, the biggest stage in sports? Well, in order for me to give you this complicated tale, I'm gonna have to take you back years. No, decades before Jackie. It's the Roaring Twenties, and on September 26, 1920, the National Football League is born. With over 300 players in leather helmets, the league looked exactly like what you would imagine. But guess what? No color barrier. That's right, from day one, the NFL was integrated, if that's what you want to call it. 14 teams, two black players. One of those men you may have even heard of, Hall of Famer Fritz Pollard. Fritz's athleticism was undeniable on both sides of the ball. He could run like an Olympian, tackle like a wrestler, and in a sport that struggles to this very day to put black head coaches to work, Fritz did that too. But despite his success, progress was slow. There'd only been 13 black players since the league was started, and things were about to get worse. In the midst of the Great Depression, league owners met secretly to discuss their growing league and the Negroes' place in it. They decided that these colored boys were bad for business. Call it what you want, but this gentleman's agreement made it clear as day, blacks were not allowed to play in their league anymore, period. Just like that, one by one, those men were erased from the rosters taking with them the brief history of the black athlete and the National Football League. Now I bet you're wondering, how in the world do you go from a handful of black players to zero to the NFL we see today? Well, this part of the story takes us to Cleveland, Ohio. It's 1945 and the Cleveland Rams are champions of the NFL. Even though it was called the National Football League, it was more regional than national. You see, because all 10 teams played in the North and mostly Eastern part of the country. So the new champs saw an opportunity to do something bold. They left Cleveland, taking their talents where no other team had gone before, West. The Rams planned to display their football prowess on Tinseltown's grandest stage, the LA Memorial Coliseum. But this iconic stadium was located right in the middle of one of LA's proudest black communities, which meant it was funded by black tax dollars. A fact that didn't go unnoticed by a group of prominent black journalists led by Haley Harding, who pushed back. Why should this all white team from this all white league get to play their games in our stadium? And you know what? The entire community agreed. In a meeting with the Rams, Haley Harding gave them the answer. Kenny Washington. Now, Kenny Kingfish Washington was the man in Southern California. No stranger to the lights, the cameras, and the action. Like any true LA kid, he knew his way around a film set as an actor, but the silver screen never captured his heart. Football did. As a homegrown product of UCLA, Kenny broke all kinds of records, even led the nation in scoring. So of course, his next step was the NFL, right? Wrong. 
Remember, it's 1945. Black players did not play in the National Football League. So, here we are yet again, faced with that same question. What is the NFL's Jackie Robinson moment? It's this moment, right here. March 21st, 1946. Kenny Washington signs with the Los Angeles Rams, breaking that 13-year unofficial color barrier in the NFL. This is what led us to Doug Williams. This is what got us to Tony Dungy and Ozzie Newsom. This is what gave us Marlon Briscoe, Jim Brown, Walter Payton, and all the black players who defied the odds, inspiring those who make the National Football League look like the nation that it represents today. Long after that day in 1946, Kenny Washington remains in the shadows, not in the Hall of Fame, like his friend and college teammate, Jackie Robinson. But remember this, it was 198 days before Jackie that Kenny Washington stepped out of that tunnel, blazing the trail for a new era on the gridiron. And that was the moment the black football player was invisible no more.